Ooh, what is up you guys? Of course, thank you for joining the Phone Hour Pokemon Wi-Fi Battle with yours truly, the Skyrim, of course. And today is a very, very special day for me because after I put up my top five Pokemon that I do hate or that I do suck, things suck in from Generation 6, I decided to at least include those guys and then mention Evlog is being a runner-up together with Delphox and just use these guys and see if I actually can get a decent battle and I went against this passerby and it came to be a real close game actually and it was incredible and very very fun to consider all the bashing I've done on this Pokemon of course. Um, quick overview, his team is very very standard OU with Inferno being UU I guess but it is Vermeer, Garchomp, Gengar, uh, Band, Aegislash, Asamuriel and Rolling Wash. I mean, nothing special there. Uh, do I expect a Rotom Wash lead? I'm myself using ZNA, Aurorus, Avalog, Meowstic, Carping, and Delphox. And not much more to put it. I tried to use Delphox as a supporter. And um, yeah, my, my Meowstic still, <laughs> set is still working great. But other than that, I actually have a choice band at DNA, and it's gonna do wonder this game. So, with that in mind, guys, um, what else can I say but enjoy? Let's do it. So, at the start here, I really expected him to, like I said, to go with the Rolling Wash. So, I myself is gonna bring DNA here right off the bat, and I was hoping for him going for a Volt Switch, getting some shift damage, really. So, I myself is going for the Wild Charge, but he actually decided to hard switch out. Which I felt was kind of weird at first, but you know, it's the better choice, and since I'm choice banned, I'm actually locked in. So I can't really say in here. I can only hope he goes for an earthquake. So I'm gonna bring in Avalog, which is heavily, heavily invested in both HP and uh, defenses. And I eat that up a little too well, to be honest. Uh, and it's gonna bring in Infernape here. And really at this point, I was just, oh no, I can't really say. And I decided to go for recover because I knew it was my best bet, really. Uh, in case it went for the stone, as you just see how much it really does. So I'm gonna bring in Lumen here, and he's gonna go for a Flame Wheel, and I take that a little too well also. And like I said there, I did expect him to beat his sports set, so that's why I decided to go for a Zyshock, just trying to see how much it does. Uh, not nearly enough. So he goes for close combat, and it doesn't do anything really, so I decided to... Alright, he's gonna U-turn now, so I might as well just go for a Wish, and uh, getting some damage off really, and then see what I can do. Um, and uh, yeah, this is where it hits me that he is probably second his Pokemon, and um, I should probably set up a Call Mind and actually try to take out where it comes next. Plus, I find it somewhat weird that uh, I do outspeed him here because I'm actually not faster by default. I am timid and uh, heavily invested, but still. It felt really weird to me, and uh, it kind of hits me throughout the battle that this guy might not be uh, having the most competitive, viable, effort-valued Pokémons. So anyway, I go for that Zyjog, and of course that destroys him. So he's gonna go in for his Rodent Wash now, and um, I decided to wing it, really, because I have nothing that really want to take in Hydro Pump on my team. Consider that I actually have three Pokémon that are weak against it. So Zyshock dug roughly 50% and he hits the higher pump and I survive it. I mean, not well, but I do survive it and that on its own is incredible. And uh, maybe Delphox isn't that bad really. You've only got some, you know, basic moves. I guess it would work rather nicely. So anyway, who will go into this god jump? I really felt that, all right, let's actually do some damage. I'll be just fine. It's the mega god jump. I never seen this thing like in, or I seen it for a very, very long time. But man, at this point, I was like, okay, this is over. Mega Guard Jump, no, thank you. So I'm just gonna do the best of I can. I'm really glad I went for Stone Edge, and not Sword Stance, and like that, because I, it's really hidden throughout here that Avlog is my only answer for this guy, and I really, I could have tried to take him out, have direct wits. Um, an avalanche, but I really wanted to try to set up and wall him out, and uh, that was because the pokes that he left. And he doesn't go for Stone Edge, he just keeps going. So I'm pretty sure this guy that I'm going up against is not too familiar with the typings that I'm using, and I think that's why he does these weird calls, to be honest. So he's going to this Gengar, and uh, I should easily one shot a Gengar with an avalanche, even without he hitting me, because. Um, 
unless it is invested, it shouldn't survive. He has to go right away for the um, Destiny Bond, and look at this. He survives! And I actually did a calc on this. If it is uninvested, I should do 105% at least. So it's a defensive Gengar, probably. Something around that. And uh, I decided to showcase Carbink. Because now I do realize this guy might not be the best of Pokemon or Pokemon trainers. So I'm just going to give him an honest chance here instead and trying to show off my Pokemon really. So Carbink, of course, walling this guy completely. So I decided to go for Stealth Frog, see if he can do anything else. But of course. I'm so specially defensive heavy that he can't even do more damage than my left over taking back and the Moonlight or Moonblast will of course destroy the Gengar at this point. So yeah, that, that actually works. It was kind of cool to be honest. And he's gonna bring his Aegislash here and I really thought alright, he should go for an Iron Head in this point so I'm just gonna stay in trying to go for Reflect before going down. He goes for a Night Slash and that does nothing, like really, really nothing. So I thought, alright, I could at least, after I get a Reflect up, bring in Aurorus, even if it goes for Sacred Sword, I should be able to live maybe one, and hopefully retaliate after that. So I'm going to Windhill, my Aurorus, and Sacred Sword doesn't do over 50%. I mean, of course, it is with them um, Reflect in mind, but still. So I go for a Dark Pulse, do some nifty damage, but really, I was so impressed with Aurorus surviving that. Uh, definitely with... Um, with Reflecting Bound really helped it out survive, I mean, it basically never does anything, so seeing him pulling through here was kind of cool, to be honest. So anyway, I'm gonna let him destroy my Aurorus here, I felt that, you know, he did a good job, it really did. And I just wanna bring my Dedene and uh, do what I really, really should have done in the beginning, which was, of course, going for that nice play rough. And look at this, this rodent of a Pokemon destroying the Might Dragons. Yes, you should fear this electric rodent, you should. I was really, really impressed with that. I never thought I will see the day where a rodent or a, a DNA uh, destroying a Mega Guard Jump. That is, is awesome. So anyway, I'm faster. I do roughly 50%. He will retaliate with another player off, which I do survive. But it gets the attacks drop, and that really, really sucks. Because that means that my next player up won't kill him. It's almost there. It really is. And, of course, he will take me out there, and either way, you know, it could have gone for an awkward yet. I wouldn't have minded at all, actually. So I'm just gonna bring in my Link to my Carbon Care, because I just really want to troll. So I went for a Toxic instead of attacking him. She's gonna go for a Super Power, and, of course, I won't do anything. Actually, would have been much better off with a Waterfall, of course, which I actually think would have been a range of taking me out. So anyway, the Poison will take its toll here and destroy the Asamril, and um, pretty much this is GG. Uh, and Oron, if you're watching this, you know, make sure to give me a heads up so I can link you to the channel or Twitter if you got something like that. I really enjoyed this battle and uh, it you have a lot to learn, definitely. But also I have a great game because I got to utilize the Pokemon that I do have bashed on so much. <laughs> it was really great, I loved it. I thought I never, you know, needed to say this, but really, it really comes to show that you need to know your Pokemons before going into a battle, and I never thought I would be in the upper hand going into this battle, consider his team. And, uh, you know, battling this guy, I mean, he had 300 battles behind him. Uh, don't know if they were win or loss, really, but he had 300 battles, so really, I knew this guy was to be considered good by default, or at least what I was, what I was thinking. So, going in here and actually destroying him like him... I really, it was a weird experience. I don't know if he let me win or if he gave up throughout the battle or something like that, but with that in mind, I really I had a blast. I really had, and it was really fun to showcase a Pokemon that are not supposed to work, and uh, I'm pretty sure they won't do it in, in, in any time anyway, after all. But still, like I said, it was a fun time. I did enjoy it, and uh, I'll try to pull a battle with these guys one more time, just for the hell of it. Uh, and if you like this battle, you know, make sure to always leave a like, I do appreciate it, and leave your comments about what you thought about it. And also, if you're new to my channel, of course, don't forget to subscribe, I do appreciate that. Because we're reaching almost 400 now, and it's gonna be awesome to be one of those 400 YouTube channel. So anyway guys, thank you all for watching, and don't forget, the sky is limits. Alright, have a good day, alright, take care. Bye.